Ritter on the slant. Intercepted! No matter who you're rooting for, your favorite team is not going to be looking the same come the first week of the regular season. Some of the biggest names on there might not be there for much longer. And today, we're taking a look at every single team and figuring out what dude they need to cut. One thing to keep in mind, the NFL is a results-oriented business, and tough, sentimental choices will have to be made by all 32 GMs before free agency and the draft roll around. So with that said, let's dive into one player that all 32 NFL teams must move on from this offseason. It kind of words out of your mouth when I was out there, play some good ball, but I just got to consistently make sure I can be out there to showcase and do that. Arizona Cardinals, Marquise Brown. The Cardinals' 2022 draft day trade for Hollywood Brown did not pan out as expected. As such, they're better off letting him walk to free agency where somebody else can pay the oft injured wideout. With the number four pick, Arizona is guaranteed one of Marvin Harrison Jr. or Romo Dunze. Both are going to emerge as WR1 wherever they land, giving Arizona extra assurance that letting Brown walk is the necessary move. Atlanta Falcons, Desmond Ritter, Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Jaden Daniels. Uh, either way, the Falcons have to get themselves a new starting quarterback this year. No sense keeping Desmond Ritter around after a very underwhelming sophomore season. Taylor Heineke will do just fine as a backup to Atlanta's next starting QB, and Ritter should be open to a fresh start anyway. Baltimore Ravens, Odell Beckham Jr. Unfortunately, the former Pro Bowler reminded everyone that he is well past his best before date. OBJ wasn't much of a factor with MVP Lamar Jackson throwing him the ball. Beckham finished the regular season with only 35 receptions for 565 yards and three touchdowns. He wasn't any better in the postseason, tallying just four receptions for 34 yards. For John Harbaugh and company, parting ways with OBJ is gotta be a no-brainer. Buffalo Bills, Tredavious White. Injuries have limited Buffalo's All-Pro corner to 21 total games over the last three years. The Bills need to get younger and cheaper on defense, and cutting the off-injured White would save them roughly $6 million in cap space. White was on a Hall of Fame trajectory before the injuries piled up, but it's time for the Bills to part ways with an aging cornerback who simply cannot stay healthy. Carolina Panthers, DJ Chark. Adam Thielen is the only pass catcher who should remain with the Panthers in 2024. He's the only one who showed up on a weekly basis after all. Chark was a complete non-factor in Carolina after taking a one-year deal. He'll leave in free agency and the front office can use valuable cap space to bring in better receiving options for Bryce Young. Chicago Bears, Justin Fields. This is also a no-brainer. The Bears can trade Fields for extra draft capital and use the number one pick on USC's Caleb Williams. Williams has higher upside than Fields, plus the Bears would enjoy the luxury of holding the former on a cheap rookie deal for four to five years. Fields most certainly has the potential to be a star in this league, but Williams is a practical sure thing to succeed. The Bears really can't overthink this. Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Mixon. Yes, he did rush for 1,034 yards last season and still has plenty of good football left in him, but cutting Mixon would save Cincinnati $5.75 million in cap space. They need to save every penny possible to retain T. Higgins while using that money to fill up other needs on the O-line and in the secondary. As good as Mixon is, running backs are a dime a dozen in today's league. The Bengals can find a much cheaper option and get similar or even better production in the backfield. Cleveland Browns, Zadarius Smith. The three-time Pro Bowler had a good night great 2023 season with the Browns, and tallying just 5.5 sacks and one forced fumble. In many cases, we endorse the idea of giving a player like Smith a prove-it deal, but he'll be 32 this upcoming season and he'll surely get overpaid by somebody else in free agency. With limited cap room, the Browns need to let Smith walk and explore cheaper options via free agency or the draft. Dallas Cowboys, Michael Gallup. If Dallas cuts Gallup post June 1st, they'll have a whopping $9.5 million in cap space. Cut him before that date, and it's only $800,000. It's a tough situation for Gallup, but this is ultimately a business. He's too injury prone and has seen his production reduce gradually over the last three years. So expect Dallas to cut Gallup in June, giving him the long overdue fresh start that he sorely needs. Denver Broncos, Jerry Judy. Perhaps no active NFLer is in greater need of a fresh start than Judy. The 2021st round pick has not been able to put it together in the Mile High City, having only hit the 60 catch mark once without a single 1,000 yard season to show for it. Denver has gone four straight years now without a 1,000 yard rusher or receiver. The offense needs an overhaul, and that includes parting ways with the maddeningly inconsistent Judy. 
Detroit Lions, Levi Onzurike. Because he's on a rookie deal, cutting Onzurike would hardly save the Lions any money. But I think it's time for the Lions to clear a roster spot for somebody else, as the 2021 second round pick has seen his career marred by injuries up to this point. Onzurike has played in just 26 games since his rookie year, even missing the entire 2022 season with an injury. Having seen just 21% of Detroit's defensive snaps last year, I think it's clear that Onzurike would benefit from a fresh start somewhere else. Green Bay Packers, David Bakhtiari. The three-time Pro Bowler played just one game in 2021, 11 in 2022, and a single contest again in 2023. With that bad of an injury history, coupled with the fact that he'll be 33 in September, I think it's obvious that the pack just needs to move on. Cutting Bakhtiari saves the Packers a hair under $21 million in cap space. They're better off using that money to bring in younger linemen and more weapons for Jordan Love. Houston Texans, Davis Mills. Mills had a stellar 2021 rookie year, but was never able to build off that. With CJ Stroud cementing himself as the new franchise quarterback, the Texans can cut Mills and find a better and cheaper backup option. The fact that Case Keenum started the two games over Mills during Stroud's injury absence sort of says a lot about how the Texans actually view Mills. His time in H-Town is now up. Indianapolis Colts, Kenny Moore the second. Moore had an excellent 2023 season on the Colts, but they need to be careful about overpaying a soon-to-be 29-year-old who's been up and down over his seven-year playing career. The Colts chill at Moore price himself out of town and look towards the cornerback-heavy draft for more defensive back help. You just can't commit too much money to a guy who has not found any consistency as a pro. Jacksonville Jaguars, Calvin Ridley. If the Jaguars re-sign Ridley, the 2024 third round pick they owe to Atlanta in the trade would become the number 48 selection. That's just too high a price to pay for a soon to be 30 year old. The Jaguars already have Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, and Travis Etienne Jr. as reliable weapons for Trevor Lawrence. They can find another receiver in the deep 2024 draft class. Or maybe they could sign someone like Mike Evans, Hollywood Brown, or Gabe Davis. A second rounder for Ridley is just far too rich. Kansas City Chiefs, Marquez Valdez Scantling. It might be sentimentally hard to cut a two-time Super Bowl champion who made plenty of big-time plays over the Chiefs' last two playoff runs, but again, it's nothing personal, and it's all business, baby. Cutting MVS saves the Chiefs $12 million. That is a lot of money that they could just use to retain superstar free agents Chris Jones and Blagerius Sneed. Las Vegas Raiders, Hunter Renfro. The former Pro Bowler had 61 receptions, 585 receiving yards, and two touchdowns over his last two seasons. And you're telling us that Vegas would save $8.21 million if they just cut Renfro before June 1st? Yeah, I think that this is a pretty easy call for the new Raiders regime. Los Angeles Chargers, Khalil Mack. Mack tallied a career-high 17 sacks last season, but keep in mind that six of those came in a single game. Also consider that this was his first season with double-digit sacks since 2018. I think that the Bolts would be wise to bet against similar production for 2024. Just saying, cutting the 33-year-old would save Jim Harbaugh's squad a ridiculous $23.5 million. I think that they could use that to, uh, I don't know, shore up the many holes on this roster. You know, namely the O-line, wide receiver, and cornerback. This right here is a move that the Bolts really need to make. Los Angeles Rams, Joe Noteboom. The Rams would clear a whopping $15 million in cap space if they cut Noteboom post-June 1st. It's a wait, yes, but it's also a no-brainer for Les Snead and a Rams team that is always up against the cap. Noteboom has been a fine option offensive tackle for Sean McVay and company, but he's also replaceable, and Snead has a successful history in finding stud offensive linemen in the later rounds of the draft. Miami Dolphins, Xavier Howard. The Dolphins would save an astronomical $18.5 million in cap space if they just cut Howard. In other words, this right here is an easy decision unless Howard is willing to make a considerable pay cut. The four-time pro bowler has made a living off of takeaways, yet he just has two interceptions over his last two seasons. He also had a lackluster 55.1 grade from Pro Football Focus for 2023, a clear indicator that it's best to move on, especially with Jalen Ramsey already slotted in as the CB1. Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins. Cousins has put together excellent stats over his six years with the Vikings, but I think it's time to reset at the position. You got a 36-year-old coming off of surgery on a torn Achilles with only one career postseason victory. All right, I mean, if that's not a sign to move on, then honestly, what the heck is? 
Many need to think long term here. Letting an aging cousins walk and finding a younger option, I don't know, Justin Field or JJ McCarthy, anybody, for Kevin O'Connell to build around, I think is the right play here. New England Patriots, Mac Jones. Bill Belichick isn't here to ruin Jones's career anymore, but it doesn't mean that new head coach Jared Mayo should give Jones another shot. With the number three pick in this year's draft, the Patriots have an easy decision to draft whichever hotshot QB prospect remains between Drake May and Jaden Daniels. Jones' unpopularity in the locker room gives New England additional reason to choose Bailey Zappi as their QB2 over Jones. New Orleans Saints, Michael Thomas. Honestly, it was surprising that the Saints decided to bring back Thomas again in 2023. Yes, it sucks that injuries quickly derailed a potential Hall of Fame career, but it's just time for the Saints to move on already. There is no justifying keeping a 31-year-old around when he has played just 20 total games over the last four years. New York Giants, Mark Lewinsky. Cutting an inconsistent veteran guard who turns 32 next season? Yeah, easy enough call. Especially when Big Blue would clear just under $5.7 million by releasing him. Reinforcements are needed on the Giants' O-line. Cutting Lewinsky is an easy starting point. New York Jets, Zach Wilson. Whether it's a trade or getting outright released, it is time for the Jets to cut ties with Wilson. He had an entire offseason to learn from Aaron Rodgers and still failed to make any progress whatsoever. The Jets are banking on Rodgers to stay healthy next season. And I think they owe it to themselves to find a competent insurance option just in case something goes awry again. And, uh, well, I think Wilson is anything but a capable backup QB. Philadelphia Eagles, Kevin Byard. The trade deadline acquisition of Byard did nothing to help the Eagles' leaky pass defense. Cutting the former Tennessee Titan superstar and fan favorite would open up a cool $13 million in cap space for Howie Roseman's squad. Another easy decision here, unless Byard is willing to take a giant pay cut. Pittsburgh Steelers, Patrick Peterson. The future Hall of Famer showed his age in the Steelers' secondary and made it obvious that Joey Porter Jr. needs more playing time in year two. Cutting this past his prime pro bowler would save the Steelers just under $7 million in cap space. That could be used towards a QB upgrade, or heck, offensive line help, or even better cornerbacks. San Francisco 49ers, Chase Young. Young didn't do a whole lot to bolster the 49ers pass rush after coming over via trade. Given his hot and cold production, it just feels like the cash-strapped 49ers would be wise to let somebody else overpay for Young's services. There are way more affordable options for the 49ers to consider, including free agents Jadavian Clowney, Frankie Louvu, Bryce Huff, Daniel Hunter, and Jonathan Grenard. Seattle Seahawks, Jamal Adams. If the Seahawks cut the injury prone and underperforming safety after June 1st, they're going to clear up a beautiful $17.122 million in cap space. The Adams trade has been an utter failure for Seattle, and they have enough depth in the secondary to make this move and improve on defense from within. Long overdue for Seattle to wave the white flag on Adams and release him altogether. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Shaq Barrett. Injuries have limited the two-time Pro Bowler to 24 games over the last two years. Barrett will be 32 years of age next season, and it's evident that the Bucks need to get younger and faster in the front seven. Cutting Barrett post June 1st opens up $4.9 million in the cap space. And, uh, well, since he appears to be past his prime, it'd be wise for the retooling Bucks to bring in a younger option to replace the well-respected veteran. Tennessee Titans, Andre Dillard. Dillard never came around in Philadelphia and hasn't been a whole lot better in the Music City. The Titans O-line will surely undergo a major facelift, and cutting Dillard should be an easy call for the second-year GM, Rand Carthen. If the Titans cut him post-June 1st, it opens up $6.48 million in cap space. This year's draft class is loaded with stud offensive linemen, so the Titans have a pretty easy path to finding a quality replacement for Dillard. Washington Commanders, Logan Thomas. Thomas has come nowhere close to matching the numbers he put up in 2020, when he hauled in 72 receptions for 670 yards and 6 touchdowns. Thomas will be 33 next season, and cutting him would open up $6.54 million in cap space. Given his age, salary, and inconsistent production, it only makes sense for the commanders to cut Thomas and start afresh at the tight end spot. But what other players do you want your favorite NFL team to part ways with this offseason? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.